Today, we're all going on a jolly summer holiday. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and property news with a distinctly Australian and New Zealand flavour. Joined again by Joe Wilkes from New Zealand. Hi, Joe. Hi, Martin. How are you? I'm pretty good. I think you should be striking up the tune, really, but we probably shouldn't. Otherwise, we might get a copyright strike. Yeah, I don't want to get in trouble with uh, old Cliff Richard. That wouldn't be good. <laughs> but uh, rather interesting conversation today. And... Uh, some very worrying data coming out about mortgage repayment holidays, or more precisely, those who aren't taking mortgage repayment holidays. Yeah, there's information uh, both fronts, really, which is uh, a bit shocking, actually, when you actually read into the detail of it. Um, it's not a surprise that the RBNZ have extended the um, six, original six-month deferral or, um, or switching of mortgages mm. into a top-month window, um, and that'll see us over the summer holiday period. So. Um, yeah, there's some quite uh, interesting reporting now in terms of the uh, the amount of debt that is uh, just being reclassified either as um, deferred or uh, restructured. Um, and particularly with respect to, I suppose, our two major uh, lending banks, uh, ANZ and Westpac, um, some of the numbers that they're reporting are quite quite phenomenal. Um, so yeah, we, we, we're delaying we're delaying something uh, or delaying a, a, a headache for later, and I don't think people really understand how you know these these they've, they've been touted in the press as mortgage holidays, and the, the the concept of the holiday is that you go away and you have a good time and, and you don't worry about things. But what the, the reports have been largely neglectful of is that these loans that are being deferred, the you know the interest is accruing, the um, the volume of debt is rising, and if the market doesn't get people out of it, i.e. through exponentially rising prices, people are going to find their equity positions um, dwindling uh, when they come off these, these terms. So the um, encouraging thing on one end is that the orig original offer of the mortgage holidays, there was a, a massive spike in people who took it back in March, March last year, March and April, sorry, March and April this year. Um, but, and those numbers have been sort of reducing in terms of how many people are week on week taking on these holidays. But at the same point, um, it's big numbers. And if you look at percentage of mortgage books now, um, it's uh, it, it's quite concerning. Westpac have reported um, this week that 18,000 of their customers, 180,000 odd customers, 18,000, so pretty much 10% of their customers have now applied for um, either a deferred, deferred payment or a switch of, switch of payment terms. Um, it's 83 percent, I think, the um, the total of house uh, total households who are owner occupied. So this stress is is, is featuring in the owner occupied sector of the market. And you were, you were um, sort of quite uh, cleverly brought up the other day that many of these people will be doing it to keep their businesses going as well. So um, where we where we go to on this difficult? Um, ANZ have reported um, basically a trebling of the. The number of, of loans that have been deferred and, and, and uh, are now what they call impaired, um, and that's in, that's just for the first three quarters of this year. So three times bigger in just three quarters of the financial year compared to the 2019 financial year. So, um, and I was shocked when I read it, but the 27 billion dollars worth of loan deferrals and adjustments on ANZ books actually represents about 20% of all their borrowers. Um, so they've got a, a loan book of 136 billion um, and that 27 billion is pretty much 20%. So <laughs> fuck, we're building up a headache. Yeah, and it's interesting. I've uh, had a couple of very um, well-qualified senior analysts in the sector here saying this um, interest repayment holiday, mortgage repayment holiday, is probably one of the biggest policy errors that's ever been made, insofar that what it's doing is kicking the problem out, it's giving people a bit of a false sense of security, it's um, adding more debt to the, you know, the balance of individual mortgages, of course it increases the bank's um, exposure even, even more, but what it does is actually stops people thinking about the critical issues, which is, well, what happens if the incomes which are compressed at the moment or gone away don't come back. And uh, uh, Ross McEwen, who's the CEO of NAB here in Australia uh, the other day, last Friday in fact, said, look, there are going to be some people whose the best option would be 
to wake up and understand they've got an issue and decide to sell sooner rather than later, simply because his experience from um, when he was at the Royal Bank of Scotland uh, a decade plus ago was these things have a habit of you know, getting out of hand. And uh, frankly, we're trying, I think, at the moment just to sort of hide a lot of what's really going on. Um, in Australia, of course, APRA has basically redefined um, loans that are actually on repayment holiday is not in any way out of order, which means that the delinquency rates, which are being reported here a lot lower than they would otherwise, but even so, Westpac's delinquency rate in Australia shot up, not just in Western Australia, but across every state for mortgages. And we you know roughly rule of thumb is that we've got around 10 to 12 percent of the mortgage book in Australia that's now got a mortgage repayment holiday. There's a few that have come back, but worryingly, 19 percent in some cases, 19 percent of the SME sector are actually um, being postponed, and and they're the ones that I'm you know as I said the other day as concerned about as ever because. Um, my other analysis, I'm just doing some work at the moment, suggests that a considerable proportion of those SMEs don't expect to be back in six months. Uh, you know, they don't expect to be around in six months. So th th we've got a, a real big sleeping problem here. Yeah, well, um, there's been some, some work done by Centrica and they've, um, they've actually broken it down by region. And um, you can see the holiday hotspots. And you've got to remember that, you know, over the next six months, normally um, New Zealand would expect to have close to two million tourists come through the country. And um, with recent lockdowns and, and, and various other things going on, are we going to see anywhere near those sorts of numbers? I, I just, I can't see, I can't see us getting 20% of those numbers. Um, but they've broken it down by the regions. And uh, some of these, some of these numbers are quite phenomenal. So Centrix receives uh, data from all the major banks on a monthly basis. And um, if you look at the holiday hotspots, so um, Queenstown, there are 11.9% of mortgages in Queenstown that are now um, uh, on payment deferral terms. 8.9% um, of mortgages in Rotorua, which um, you know another holiday hotspot south of Auckland, and, and it's often one of the first stops that the tourists make on the way on the way down down from from Auckland, um, where they typically arrive. Um, away from the t those two top hotspots, you've got um, Taupo, which is another holiday area. 8.4% of mortgages that are being deferred. Whangarei, 8.7%, and Tauranga over in the Bay of Plenty, which is um, this was an interesting one for me because Tauranga is, um, you know, it is a holiday area, but it's also um, a, a, an area where people do go to, to retire, and that's 7.6% of mortgages there. The major cities less impacted thus far, Wellington. 3.8% of mortgages are on, on uh, payment deferral terms. But again, half of Wellington's employment is government and um, they will be um, well cushioned in, in terms of the, the numbers there. Auckland, Christchurch, a bit more worrying, 6.8% of mortgages in, in, in Auckland, 6.3% of mortgages in Christchurch. So when you look at that, um, that's quite a lot. Well, you touched on it. It's it's those that haven't actually gone and sought help as well. Um, and this is where Centrica's um, the, 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 you know, data is quite, Quite concerning. It's thirteen and a half thousand mortgages currently in arrears, where there's been no application for deferral. So these people have the opportunity to defer, but haven't, um, and that for me is is really around the financial literacy of of, of you know borrowers um, not actually understanding uh, when they're in when they're in trouble. And this is the old, you know the ostrich approach to, um, to the ostrich approach driving the ship. Um, so yeah, we've we've got things building, and um, the you know the Reserve Bank have gone out there and you know, they've extended it. It's been reported in in places like um, the CoreLogic uh, report. They've they've gone out and they've, they've mentioned this, but haven't gone into quite probably the detail that we have. Um, not seen on the news though, and I think there'd be a lot of people who are just you know really twiddling their thumbs and and completely oblivious to the to the challenges that are building up for them. Yes, and of course, what tends to happen, um, as typically uh, in a in a crisis, it doesn't hit immediately, right? I mean, if you look in the U.S. or indeed in the U.K. through the global financial crisis, the peak of mortgage defaults happened not six months after the global financial crisis. It was two or three years because effectively these things just accumulate and build up and build up. Um, it may be faster this time, but I suspect that we're not going to see the real fallout from loss of jobs and low incomes for quite a long time. One reason why I've always believed that the global financial crisis didn't lead to a V-shaped recovery, and I don't think this will now here in New Zealand or Australia lead to a V-shaped recovery. You know, it's, it's clear that it's going to take a long, long time to claw back up to anything close to where we were. And in fact, in some industries, 
where you know I've got in my data I've got 60% of businesses saying they probably will survive so 40% saying they're unlikely Not. to survive right mm -hmm. and if you start looking then across the states you discover that well Victoria of course is a real hotspot because we've locked down again and if, then if you look at some of the industries, well, you retail's re really up against it. So retail is right down the bottom of the scale, um, as is some of the tourist and uh, accommodation um, uh, categories as well. Um, whereas things like um, you know healthcare is much more uh, bullish about what's going on. And uh, but the real estate sector, about uh, thirty percent of people in real estate are saying they probably won't be around in six months. So that that's all sort of showing that this is. A long, slow burn, rather than actually a, a kaboom. Yeah, well, the, this will this will cushion things for longer. It cushion things through the election. Um, so we've got the election has been pushed back, as we predicted. So that's been pushed back a month. Um, my experience in the UK when we when we um, were looking at people who'd lost jobs, and it was largely financial based um, uh, job losses in in the GFC, was that the banks were quite lenient where they felt that there was plenty of equity for um, mortgage holidays to be extended for you know, a year. People were switched over to interest only. They um, were given quite a lot of flexibility because the perception was that worst comes to the worst. If the bank did need to sell, they still could and recover their, recover their loan. The things where um, they were probably a little bit, uh, little bit quicker to press the button is where they thought, okay, well, actually, there isn't a lot of equity in this and if we leave it longer there might be less and we might not recover so i am not sure how this will play out over here i think that the, the circumstances this time around are, are very very different and there's already you know the, there is far quicker appetite for for the extend extended pretend policies but um look you know you look at how will the banks react to say for example borrowers who have lost their jobs in their in their 50s um Will they get the same leeway to go and extend mortgage terms into you know twenty years from fifteen years? That that wasn't uncommon. So um, last time round, people who were you know maybe on a fifteen years left of the mortgage to pay, um, they were given extended terms to reduce the reduce the payment um, or monthly payments. Now, will that happen again? Are we going to see mortgages extended? So you know you think you've got ten years and but you're in you know you need some leeway and all of a sudden it's a twenty year term. Or a 25-year term, or a 30-year term. We've got so many mortgages that are already on 30-year terms to begin with. So, um, the, the backdrop's unusual. Um, house sales reported by RAI and Z uh, July uh, were 25% up on on the July figures for 2019. So the volume of transactions is higher. Um, the debt to income multiples, particularly in the first-time buyer sector, is higher than it's ever been. Um, and um, and yet we've got all this in the background where there there are obviously pockets of, of the market um, and some of these are not insignificant pockets when you look at the, the numbers for you know Queenstown, Rotorua is a big market, Topo um, and Tauranga which is essentially our fifth biggest city so um, these are not insignificant levels of, of, of stress building um, we'll just see what happens. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we shall continue to watch and uh, we'll continue to report. Um, certainly, I've had some anecdotal data from uh, people who've been contacted by their bank when they're on repayment deferrals, and they're starting to get quite heavy um, hints that, you know, well, maybe you should consider um, putting your property on the market and, um, you know, and selling before prices fall. Uh, in, mo in most cases, these are relatively high loan to value loans. So I think we're already seeing the first signs here in Australia of the banks beginning to apply some pressure. So I think we're going to see more of that. Tell you what, Joe, why don't you come on the live show on Tuesday and we can perhaps explore this a bit further with our audience and see what, what our audience thinks and also see what, um, uh, what stories we can uh, discuss in, in real time. I think it'll be a good thing to do. Yeah, no, I'm happy to do that. Um, I think the thing for me, and this is something that, you know, we've got a, quite a, uh, an educated uh, following now of, of DFA. And, um, a lot of the, you guys who are watching this show, you, you're aware of the situation and you, you know, you, you're supporting Martin and, and, and wanting to be um, made aware of what's going on. Now, you guys are in a good spot because you're getting some education, but you'll have probably family members and, and friends uh, and relatives who may or may not um, be in the situation that they're prepared to talk about it. Now, my experiences in the UK were that a lot of the time when, when we were dealing with these issues um, during the financial crisis was that um, as, a, as a real estate agent, I was almost a counsellor to um, husbands and wives who basically they, they just shut up shop. They, they had um, gone into a shell, 
struggled to talk about it to people. Um, and then, you, you know, as an agent, I became became a counsellor in many circumstances and just trying to engineer ways for them to, 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 to change their situations. Sometimes it was downsizing the mortgage, um, you know, buying a small house and, and, and making a, a lifestyle decision that, you know, on the face of it, it's is not a nice thing to do because you feel that you're going backwards when you downsize in your 40s or 50s. But um, it was the best thing for them to be doing. Now, the conversation doesn't often happen. And this is the thing, and, and families in particular, you should, you know, keep an eye on, keep an eye on your friends, keep an eye on people who have lost jobs and just make sure that they're, um, they're okay. Yeah, great advice, Joe. And as we sometimes say with Tony Lecantro, if you're going to panic, panic early. Appreciate your time today. Uh, we'll catch up next uh, Tuesday, 8 p.m. Sydney time, and uh, look forward to the live stream then. And uh, we'll keep on tracking the data meantime. Sounds good, Martin. Take care, mate. Cheers. Cheers.